So we've talked a lot about pressure and time and how pressure actually changes in the left ventricle over time. And I'm going to kind of take that one step further by describing to you what happens in the left atrium over one second. So still kind of the same way we've been looking at it with pressure and time on the two axes. And of course, pressure goes up in that direction. Let's say this is about 100 and let's say zero is down there. And I'm going to measure it all in the same units, millimeters of mercury. So let's start with the left ventricle. And we know that the left ventricular pressure kind of rises steadily, and then it contracts really hard, right? So it kind of has this huge contraction, which increases the pressure dramatically. And then it kind of bottoms out as the left ventricle relaxes. And then it kind of slowly picks up again in pressure as more blood fills in. And of course, then you have your aortic pressure as well. I'll put the aortic pressure in yellow. And the aortic pressure is actually kind of slowly drifting down, and then it kind of picks up along with the left ventricle, goes for a nice ride, and then at some point, the aortic pressure actually kind of exceeds, goes higher than the left ventricle pressure, and that's because of the compliance of the aortic walls. And you get this kind of notch, this what we call a dichrotic notch. And let me just make sure I kind of end it in the right spot, something like that. So that's kind of what the aorta is doing. And this is our aortic pressure curve. Aortic curve. And this, of course, is our notch. Notch. And the name of our notch is dichrotic notch. Dichrotic notch. So you'll see that word. Now, what's happening with the left atrium? Well, the left atrial pressure is basically the same as our left ventricular pressure for a little while. And I'm actually going to sketch it out on the side so you can kind of get a visual idea of what's happening in the left ventricle and the left atrium during this time. So, you know, you've got the aorta coming off, and let's do our big ventricle down here. And our atrium, our left atrium, which is right here, is getting blood from two sources, right? The left and right pulmonary veins. So this is our left pulmonary vein. And of course, then there's the right pulmonary vein. And let me actually finish off the aorta first before I draw the pulmonary veins. So this is our pulmonary vein kind of going from behind, and this is coming from the other lung, right? So this is our right pulmonary vein. So these are our two sources of blood. This is where the blood is really coming from, and the pulmonary veins have blood that's coming with a little bit of pressure, right? A little bit of pressure with these veins. And so blood is kind of coming in this way, and it's staying in the, you know, at times in that left atrium. And why is it staying there? Well, because there's a valve here, right? There's no valve that uh, separates the left atrium from the pulmonary veins. There's no valve there, but there is a valve here. And there's also a valve in here. So these valves, we know this one is called the mitral valve. Mitral valve. And that separates it from the ventricle. And on the other side, you've got your aortic valve. Aortic valve. And at the beginning, kind of the beginning of this process, what's going on? Well, you've got the, there's a free kind of space here. I think I make it very clear that there's space here between the, uh, the left atrium and the left ventricle. The valves are not closed, right? And you're actually getting blood flow this way. So really, the way I want you to think about it is the left atrium and left ventricle are really one giant chamber at this point, right? There's no difference in the two. And so, of course, the pressure would be basically the same. And so I'm trying to draw it basically the same in those two spaces, right? So the pressure is basically the same. And the uh, maybe a, a slight increase in the left atrium side. And, and why would that be? Well, that's where the blood is initially coming in. So there's a high pressure in the pulmonary veins. And so maybe there's a slight increase in pressure in the left atrium over the left ventricle. But it's very similar, right? So this pressure tracing looks about the same. But then there's a bump. There's a bump here. Why would there be a bump? Well, there is a process called atrial systole, meaning the atrium actually contracts. That's all it means. So atrial systole just means that just like the ventricle likes to contract, the atria can also contract. And I'm going to actually put a giant red square around this letter A because we actually end up calling this the A wave, the A wave. So the pressure tracing for the ventricle then is not really accurate. It's not really straight, is it? 
it actually has a little bump as well. So because the two chambers are continuous, whatever's happening in one is reflected in the other, and you get this little bump there. So then you get this huge, so then the contraction stops, right? So atrial systole is over with, contraction stops, and that's why the bump comes back down. So that's, that's what explains why it kind of comes down this way. Now, the ventricle contracts, right? That's the part we, we definitely feel very comfortable with. The ventricle has a huge contraction. We know this. And so, of course, you're going to get, uh, you know, all this pressure building up. And this causes, and this is actually going to get kind of interesting here, this causes these valves, this mitral valve, to kind of all of a sudden close up. Now remember, these atrioventricular valves, meaning the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve, those are the two atrioventricular valves, they have these interesting chordae tendinae, right? They have these things called chordae tendinae, basically little tendons or uh, cords, I guess you could use either word, right? Chordae tendinae. And what it does is it really prevents the mitral valve. Of course, the mitral valve is going to want to close, right? There's no doubt about it because the pressure in here is so darn high in the ventricle. So, of course, the mitral valve is going to want to close. So, that means that this arrow is gone, right? But these cords prevent the valve from kind of flipping backwards. They don't let the valves go into the left atrium and kind of flop in the wind. They really keep the valves tight. Now remember, there's so much pressure in the left ventricle that the valves are going to want to kind of uh, buckle in, but the uh, chordae tendinae keep them firm, right? But what really happens, interestingly, is that because the contraction happens so darn quick, there's blood that's actually snapping back, just like in the dichrotic notch. Remember, we talked about snap back of blood. It, it really is, it, you could think of it as crashing off of that valve. So now there's actually blood crashing, I'm using that word specifically, crashing off the mitral valve, off the mitral valve, mitral valve. So what would that do? Well, if blood is crashing off the mitral valve, then it's going to increase pressure in the left atrium, right? You're going to get a little bit of increased pressure in the left atrium. So for a short time, right when the uh, uh, aortic, uh, sorry, right when the mitral valve is closing, you're going to get a little bump in pressure. So that explains what's happening here. You get this tiny little bump in pressure, and we call that the C wave. So there's a C wave that happens. So it's interesting. You got this A wave and this C wave, right? And then, actually, maybe I drew this a little bit too low, and then you have, over time, now that the mitral valve is closed, more blood coming in, right? So you've got more blood coming in from the two sides, from the left and right pulmonary vein. Of course, that's continuously happening, except now there's no continuous space with the left ventricle. So all that blood has only one chamber to sit in, right? Not two like before. Only has one chamber, which is the left atrium. So the pressure starts rising, 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 rising in the left atrium because, of course, it's taking in a lot of blood and it really can't release it because that mitral valve is still shut. Now, at some point, that left atrium is going to wait. It's going to wait for the left ventricle to finally have less pressure. It's waiting for the pressure in the left ventricle to kind of decrease. And what is that decrease? Well, this contraction finally kind of relaxes, right? So all these arrows kind of go away slowly, kind of go away slowly over time. And you have a little bit of contraction left, let's say. But, but really, it's, it's almost just a little bit uh, compared to how much there was. So the pressure is almost back down. And so the left atrium's filling up with blood. Let me show that. Filling up with blood. So that's why the pressure is rising here. And simultaneously, the pressure is falling in the left ventricle. So there you have an interesting uh, uh, difference. So there you have an interesting difference because on one side, pressure is rising and the other pressure is falling. And you're going to actually get a cross here, a cross, which means that the pressure in the left atrium left atrium pressure is actually going to be higher is going to be higher than the left ventricle pressure so at that point of course if the pressure on one side is higher now than the other this mitral valve is going to open again so finally you're going to get opening of the mitral valve again right and blood can now dump in the so blood can now dump in so 
At this point, blood dumps in. The left atrium is just so relieved. It's like, you know, imagine you have to go to the bathroom and you, uh, you know, finally urinate. Your bladder is so relieved because all that fullness is gone, right? The same thing, the left atrium's fullness is gone. And so it basically kind of empties out very quickly and the pressure falls. So you might be thinking, well, wait a second. If pressure is falling in the left atrium, that makes sense. But why is pressure falling in the left ventricle? I mean, isn't it filling up with blood? And doesn't filling, you know, if it's filling up with blood, doesn't that mean that, you know, pressure is rising? Uh, that's sort of true, but remember there's also another process going on. So on the one hand, on the one hand you have more blood, and you're right, that would definitely cause more pressure, right? That should cause more pressure. But on the other hand, remember you still have relaxation, right? You have another process going on. The heart or the left ventricle is still relaxing. All those muscles are repolarizing. So that's going to cause a decrease in pressure. So you have these two counteracting forces. And for a very short time, just for, you know, let's say from here to here, this short period of time, the pressure uh, is actually falling because the relaxing wins out. That's actually the bigger deal. And so you have a decrease in the left ventricular pressure because that last little bit of um, pressure that it was exerting goes away. And finally, when that goes away, now you have nothing but filling. So now you kind of slowly will fill it up more, you know, let's say to that level, and then you'll fill it up more, let's say to this level, and you'll just keep filling all the way back up, right? So you'll kind of slowly fill back up, and the pressure will just kind of keep rising in the left ventricle. And similarly, the left atrium, because of course, the, there's a continuous space like we talked about between the two ventricles. So now you can see that there's actually a third, you could call it a wave, but really it's just kind of a spike in a way right here, which we call V. And, and you can kind of remember that by saying, well, that's when the uh, left atrium is very full. So very full left atrium, very full left atrium is what causes that last little spike. And the fact that there's a, a quick drop off is because that's when the mitral valve opens. So let me actually box that. So you can remember the three interesting parts of the left atrium pressure wave. The A is when there's atrial systole, so you have a little uh, bump in pressure from the contraction of the muscle. C is from blood crashing off of that mitral valve, so that's really because of the left ventricle squeezing and of course all the, um, the mitral valve snapping shut suddenly. And then V is the very full left atrium, right? And one final thing I wanna point out is that the middle one, this C, you know, this is actually really quite similar to what we described happening with the dichrotic notch, right? Similar idea because there we also had blood crashing off. You had blood crashing off the aortic valve. And there we talked about the compliance of the aorta. So there's actually some similarities between the two, but this is the left atrium pressure wave now.